Hello and welcome to another episode of Brand Retro. Um, today I have the guys from Chessy on the podcast and we're going to talk about a new approach to video marketing. So much so that we're going to talk about storytelling videos for under $250 each, which is a crazy price point for something like that. We're going to talk a little bit about the branding process because hey, I help them do their brand, but also kind of what Chessy does and kind of the market that they serve. So. Whether you've considered hiring an in-house videographer or a marketing agency, we know it's expensive, right? So most video production companies will charge you thousands of dollars for just one video. Chessy produces quality videos for an entire year to tell your organization's story, your customer's story, and much, much more. Joe and Luke, welcome to the podcast. How's it going today? Good. Thanks for having us, Mike. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate it. So today we're going to talk about a couple of things. I want to I want to jump in and, and talk a little bit about what Chessy does because it, especially in my experience, it's pretty unique positioning in the industry and how you guys approach it and how you guys filled a, a gap or a niche there. But to start with, I want to talk about the escalation of becoming Chessy, the branding process, all of that good stuff. So. To set it up, you're one of the very few customers that comes to me understanding the importance of brand and saying, hey, here's what we want to do. We know what's important. Help us figure it out. A lot of times when customers come to me, it's me having to educate them, convince them, or almost kind of drag them kicking and screaming. And, and sometimes to, to the point where they still don't understand the importance of brand, even though I continue to beat that drum. So. Tell me a little bit about the start of Chessy and how you guys knew that first step was so important and that branding needed to be part of it. Yeah. So I, I guess to start, I would like to just talk about what Chessy is and how it came up, uh, about in the first place. So Chessy is actually owned by the parent company, Advertise Edge, which is uh, also located in Fargo, North Dakota. That is more of a traditional video marketing company that is high end. Um, a few awards for a handful of different videos that we've created. And it was the summer of 2020. And we just looked around the marketplace or the market of Fargo, Moorhead. And we just had the idea like that, let's try to solve the problem that video marketing is a little bit too expensive when it comes for, to nonprofits and small businesses, startups, etc. So we wanted to provide a solution that not only helps the little guys, but then also it's sustainable and it's scalable for us on our end as well. So we knew that we had high hopes going into this project to scale across the nation. And with that idea, we knew we needed a nice brand to kick things off for our launch in January of 2021. So tell me a little bit about Kind of the process, again, not fishing for compliments. I'm not looking for a, for a plug here, but what I want to hear, or what I want you to dig into is A, what that process looked like, but B, maybe how you felt the impact of the Chessy rollout versus even Advertise Edge or other projects that you've been involved with. Yeah. So we knew that we wanted a brand that kind of spoke more to people that was less serious. We could have fun with it, joke around with it. And uh, Advertise Edge wasn't exactly that. We wanted to, to be much more professional and uh, clear cut. So with Chessy, when we were working with you, Mike, I think we, we brought up the fact that we wanted a, a fun brand, a brand that can really, a modern brand, similar to CyberDogs, how it's very personable. So I think that was the main distinction between Chessy and Advertise. How do you feel like it's benefited you guys in the long run? I personally am biased again, having watched the Chessy brand evolve from the beginning, I personally feel like it hit the ground running because you guys did a lot of things up front before you ever launched it. So by the time you guys unveiled this plan, there was a lot of pieces in place. And then since then, I think you've been able to leverage and evolve the brand as you've gone, which honestly is important because a lot of people forget to do that. They, they train leaves the station, they start working the business, all of a sudden they're wearing too many hats, they're doing accounting, they're doing sales, they're doing production, they're doing all these different things. And the brand is one of the first things that gets backburnered or left by the wayside, where in contrast, I think that's something that you guys have embraced and continued to do along the way, which is cool for such a young brand, but to also see it have evolved that much over a short amount of time. Yeah, and I think that was one of the the first things, like you mentioned, Mike, that we wanted to address. Coming from a mature company, we had the background of the other things 
the accounting, the production, the experience. So I think the first thing we wanted to address was the branding and making a brand that people remember, a brand that people can relate to. And, and yeah, I think you, you made that really easy for us, Mike. I would say that when we were going through the, the design process and when you were giving us the presentation on kind of the first round of mock, we had Chesy the Yeti, we had Chesy the Duck, we had a couple other ones, but we kind of, we picked uh, Chesy the Clapper and it, the logo itself may not have been our top pick, but how we were going to use the clapper in real life when it comes to our video shoots, we're actually going to have a branded clapper on set for all of our clients. To, that's why we picked Chesy the Clapper. It really just makes the shoot days fun. Everyone kind of laughs when they get to, to do it. And it's very engaging to have people even use their like Facebook profile picture with our clapper. I think that's when it comes down to the branding that we have as a video company. It's only been a year, but I think we have surpassed Advertise Edge, especially when it comes to brand awareness. So, yeah, that's one of the cool factors about the clapper concept is that it's become in a good way. It's got its gimmick to it, but at the same time, it's very engaging with other people and it gives them kind of something to do with their hands when they get to hold the clapper, they get to do the whole thing. So just to take a step back and for the listeners. So when we did this project, correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but we talked a little bit of finding that thing. What's that thing? Is it a mascot? Is it an icon? Is it an element? We knew that there needed to be an anchor to this brand. We didn't know what that was necessarily, but we knew we, we wanted something like that. When we had originally and in, in, from inception kind of brainstormed ideas, we talked about somewhat having this West Coast vibe. How do we make it fun? How do we do something cool? I remember I'd show you a, a bunch of different examples of websites, logos, and just different things that could serve as inspiration. So when we came back with that first round, we threw ideas out there. Like Joe said, we had a Yeti Bigfoot concept that would have played as that main character. And we talked, what if you had a Bigfoot suit? You know what I mean? What if you could come to the shoots, like almost bringing this mask out of this character to life? We also talked about it's going to sound weird, but it was a duck, but with the concept, the design and the way that, that, that original kind of one of those rejected options was designed, the duck was actually part of almost like a camera shape, camera makeup. So that the shape of the logo and the character itself were tied together. And if I remember correctly, Joe, I, I believe the duck was your favorite. We just didn't think it had the same appeal as the clapper. So when we got as far as the clapper, even though I think at first it was probably second or third in the running, we, we talked a little bit about the, the legs that this thing could have as far as creating animations, creating the bumper on the different videos. How do we then put a clapper in somebody's hands? How do we, you know, really break this thing out and expand it? And I don't still to this day, I don't know if it was easily. It's still not an easy choice. When I think back to those other logos, I'm confident we picked the right one, but they were all so close because there, there were some winners in there. And I think the idea of what we're going to do with it, that was the part that kind of led us to the decision of the clapper. But I also think what you guys have done with it since then is what solidifies that as the right choice as well, because there's a lot of cool stuff going on with the brand as far as the color usage, the logo, the clap, or some different things you've done with the, the video animation side as well. But that's a background in the journey on the logo or the brand creation process. Now, let me ask you guys this. So if you could go back and do it again, or if you could start that, that next company, which not to give anything away, but what would you change? As far as our branding? Just as far as the process, how to flush it out deeper, how to how to maybe replicate the success and or the the magic that we had with Jesse. I'm going to throw this out there just from my perspective. Not that it wasn't work, but Chesy came to us pretty easy. You know what I mean? Like we, I think we landed, we did a lot of discovery work. We did a lot of discussions up, up front, but I think once we started putting pen to paper and creatively crafting this thing, I think it started to just become obvious for us, which is a great problem to have, but that being said, how do we replicate that? Yeah. And to give everyone some kind of background on what we do, we, we produce a year's worth of video content for $250 each video. You get two videos a month 
So a total of 24 videos is what you get for would that have the same quality as more traditional video marketing companies for one or two videos. So when it came to that duck logo that we had, I really love the design of it. And we had to play around with some terminology, like how would we use this brand in our communication? So you're talking about, you get a flock of videos or when it came to the, the Yeti, it's unreal pricing. Or I think you had a, Mike, you actually had some better uh, communication terms on the Yeti, but yeah, I think when it came down to it and we actually had to make a decision between the three of those, it was what is the most practical, the easiest and the simple to communicate directly when it comes to our brand. And I think the clap, because we don't have video in the name, it's just Chessy having the clapper we thought was vital to communicate what we do without actually having the word video or media or production house or anything like that. What would you add? Yeah. And I would say, I think our biggest thing is we don't want to take ourselves too seriously. People always come up to us when they see our name tag or our shirts and like cheesy. And then we're like, no, it's cheesy. So we like, and we like that. It's then they remember it. Everyone assumes it's cheesy. And then we just play with that. So we've made promotional videos that joke around like that too. So I'd say my advice is to, if you're a creative brand, maybe not taking yourself your brand too seriously and, you know, have fun with it. Yeah. One of the, one of the things I'll just throw in there from a brand creation standpoint, a lot of times the clients, brands, they, they want to pack it all in one presentation, right? They want the name to be super descriptive. They want the logo to be obvious. They, they just want to pack too much information and put too much, almost too much pressure on the brand where the brand itself is sometimes a, a three-legged stool. It's the presentation of the icon or the logo with the name, with the colors, with the... So there's three or four, maybe even five elements that kind of play together that make that brand unified and make it stand out. Not that, again, not that we don't want to be intentional with things, but I think you have to look at the collective, whether there's two elements, three elements, whatever it is, you have to look at the collective and how they work together in order for that brand to truly represent what you want and for it to be an air quotes obvious to people. That's one of the things just in reference to the Chessy brand. I think that's one of the things that works well with yours because the name Chessy, like you said, it's well, people want to say cheesy or that's not like a super obvious word. So that being itself, it seems like a weakness, but it's actually a strength. And then how that then connects to the fun logo, the video clapper, which, you know, implies video. So some of those elements, those three or four elements working together work as a collective to make that sink in for the audience and for the customers. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I think also one thing I would like to add is I really applaud Joe and yourself, Mike, for your guys' input, keeping it just chessy. That's it's like you had mentioned, Mike, a lot of companies want to fit everything in the brand name. It's very common for our industry to to do that. So we really wanted to separate ourselves. And I think Joe did that really well, while also playing into a fun way of explaining how he came up with the, the name with his last name being Chesville. When you look at very, like many uh, modern brands out there, it's one name, it's very catchy, it's very simple. And I think that's the approach you wanted to take, Joe, but correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. My last name is spelled T-J-O-S-V-O-L-D. And it is a very Norwegian name and no one knows how to say it. Growing up, substitute teachers, absolutely no one knew how to say my last name. So just to provide maybe an English version of how you would spell my, spell the first part of my last name, Chezzy, a C-H-E-Z-Y. That's just kind of where the idea came from. And I think what we're trying to do is we're not trying to be your average video marketing company, because we're not, we're more of a technology company of how we get our video. And as we scale across the nation, we wanted that brand like Amazon, like Nike, that, what does that mean? What's a Nike? What's an Adidas? But you create your own term and that term means something only to your company. And I think that's really what was important to us. And definitely I think it was Mike that said, don't put media at the end of it. Don't put video at the end of it. So, yeah. yeah. Let me speak to why just real quick. A lot of people, when they start companies, they start branding, they start this process of how they're going to name their business. It feels super obvious and it's instinctual that we want to just describe it. We want to say Joe's plumbing, Joe's 
media service. They want to encompass all these things and be super direct. But 99% of the time, you're going to get six months down that road, a year down that road, two years down that road, whatever it is, you're going to add a service. You're going to subtract a service. You're going to do something a little different with it. And all of a sudden you're at this crossroads of saying, now my name doesn't make sense because I was Joe's media or I was Luke's this, and now I have to rename my business. And how do I do that? And it happens all the time. I have clients come to me. I can't even, I can't even tell you how many there are throughout the year where we have to rethink the alignment of their brand to other services, to other sister companies, to other things that they're doing, because when they first started out, they locked themselves into whatever that name was or that service set was. So that's a little backstory of kind of the nightmare of why you don't want to do that. But the idea is to remain nimble. And if you can come up with something like Chessy did, it, it has a lineage, it has a history to it. There's a reason behind it. And all of a sudden they've almost created this own word that is theirs. That's something unique. And that's something that's going to resonate for a long time. And people will remember that. So to transition just a little bit, let's talk a little bit about the benefit or the value behind Chessy. So I know, Joe, you talked a little bit about what it is. And just to put it in context, that is unheard of as far as like pricing is to get production value and to get videos, deliverables, content like you would get from Chessy for that price point. Now, what I will say to set that up a little bit is that I see companies, businesses all the time that are working on fixed budgets. And a lot of times what happens is you have a video portion to your budget or a media portion. And you have to find somebody that can produce whatever it is you want to produce for that dollar amount. So if you go shopping around for video companies and you want to get maybe a series of social media videos done, or maybe it's two or three commercials or whatever it is, you'll see how fast a video company, a good sized video company can eat up that budget quick. So that's one scenario. And that's a, a reality of marketing and finding companies that can produce those kinds of videos. The other side of it is. People want content for their social media. They want quick hitting videos to throw it on their YouTube page. They, they want stuff that's easily digestible, but doesn't necessarily have, have to have the shelf life of 10 years because they don't have the budget to support doing multiples. So that's the problem that they're solving in that any company with, I'll let Joe speak to the numbers, but any company with a moderate budget can get a lot of value by working with a company or working with Chessy on producing a series of videos. And the time span in which they stretch out is insane because it actually will get you from budget year to budget year. Now, I'm going to go ahead and point at you, Joe. This is where you can jump in and explain the details. But I just wanted people to realize, oh, we dusted over it, but realize the impact and the value of what you guys do because I meet with clients all the time that have not a lot of budget and say, Hey, what can you do for this? And the answer is typically not much. Yeah, this is video marketing is a very expensive industry and rightfully equipment is expensive. Knowledge and the technical ability of finding employees that know how to use the equipment is also is, is very scarce. For you. So there's a reason why video marketing is so expensive and we just wanted to do and our team, when we first launched Chessy with Advertise Edge, we were all award-winning either directors, cinematographers, editors. We were all award-winning for Advertise Edge, producing videos for $5,000, $10,000, $15,000 a piece. What we chose to do is just totally flip the market because it is a very unique area to where we can be elite at for a low price, very similar to what Costco or Chick-fil-A does, where they're elite brands. They provide an elite product or service, but they're not charging the most product or service. And that's where we wanted to fit into the market and, and where we found the innovation and in, with our approach that we developed, that's how we can save our clients money. That's how we can keep it affordable. Yeah. I'm at a loss for words. No, oh, yeah. And, uh, to play off of that, it's not just about charging less just to to make it cheaper for the client. It's also about our process. We want to make it efficient on our end without losing any quality on the client's end. So we 
We're not showing up with an iPhone. We're not showing up a little light. We're, we're bringing the same type of equipment that we would on a traditional video marketing shoot, like an Advertise Edge project. The way that things are different is our process and, and how we manage that project. So it's not just about charging less to make ourselves seem like the best option. We, we also want to keep it making sense on our end too. Oh, it wouldn't be sustainable if uh, yep. we didn't have the ability to produce the amount of volume of videos that we're producing. So we do have, we have a lot of trade secrets. Most of them are in post-production of how we're able to manage, not only manage the amount of time editing projects, but there's a lot of data. It's like we are on almost 10 shoots every single month on average. There is a lot of footage that we need to store. So the trade secrets and the tech side of what we do all comes in the editing process. And what I usually say when it comes to our pricing is we're coming in with twenty to $25,000 worth of video equipment. And every single company that has that equipment or above is charging $10,000 a piece for each video. Yep. So yeah, how I would describe it is just bang for your buck. Yeah. It's not, I think the word cheap is there's too many variations or too many, too much reading into that word. Yes. I would say that these guys are affordable, but at the same time, it's bang for your buck. The quality is still there. It's not cheap video. It's, it's quality bang for your buck kind of video. So if, if you've ever been in that scenario where, Hey, I'd love to get some content, some videos made and the budget just doesn't allow it, which in most cases, that's what happens rethink it take the time go check these guys out so guys tell us a little bit about where we can follow you and connect with you and thank you for being on the podcast yeah so we're very active on our social medias chesy creative on instagram chesy on facebook and linkedin we love to post about our shoots i get involved in the community we are really big on giving back uh, a lot of our clients are actually nonprofit clients so we we really want to get involved in the community and give back as much as we can. But yeah, follow along for the ride. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Mike. If you'd like to learn more about CyberDogs, share your thoughts, or even ask a specific question about this episode and or the brand retro mindset, contact me directly at mike at cyberdogsmarketing.com.